Have you ever gone to McDonald's and gotten an apple pie? Yes. Does that not taste super similar with a little bit of icing on top? Hey guys, welcome to a special episode of Beer TV where we give you the cold hard facts. Today, we're gonna be reviewing the Bright Cider by Two Town Cider House. Now, like the name suggests, this is a cider. It's not a beer. No fillers. But it's kind of like an apple juice with alcohol in it. It's a great uh, mix between wine and beer. Mm -hmm. This particular cider is coming in at 6% ABV. And the great thing I love about this cider house is this has three ingredients. They have apples, sulfites and malic acid exactly all the other ciders that you have are they're not really ciders you know your apple field is angry because you have too many ingredients in it yeah and you know when you get angry you turn a certain color like your face gets all red yeah red. so let's get on the crack in these ciders and see what we got here so this is another one of their flagship ciders that's available all year round. It's called the Bright Cider. Um, very excited to hop into this one. Even though there's no hops in it. Even though there's no hops in it, amen to that. All right, now let's get into the aroma of this cider. What are you getting? Uh, you know, it's, to me, kind of like a sparkling white wine is really what it smells like. Um, the apple isn't there too much. I thought it was gonna be a little bit more dominant. Uh, kind of like when we did the bad apple, you were able to smell that apple right away. This one is a little bit more subtle. I know that you looked up some stuff and got a little bit more information upon that. Yeah, so sparkling wine is actually on point. Uh, it smells like a white wine and the thing, that's not a turn off at all because when you smell wine, it doesn't really smell like grapes. It, wine is its own uh, kind of aroma, distinct flavor. Aroma, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very distinct. and. Because wine doesn't do that with grapes, it actually makes sense that it wouldn't do that with apples. Apples as well, yeah. So because of that, and because it's in keeping with the BJCP standards for cider, I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 12. I'm gonna do a 10 out of 12 as well. I agree with everything you said. Um, let's go ahead and hop on to the appearance of the cider. Now, initially, what are you getting here, Spencer? This is a brilliant, this is not, or this is filtered completely, which completely, yes. it's supposed to be. There is no free floating anything. Yep. It's 100% like the bad apple, like you said, the brilliance level is identical to the yep. ciders, and that's how it's supposed to be. If you have something like we said for the bad apple that's cloudy, musky, bad. It's not supposed to be that way whatsoever. It's the color is a uh, champagne, which is the first thing that pops into your head. It's champagne or kind of like a lighter apple juice, which that's what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm gonna give it a three out of three. It hit everything, uh, you know, nail in the head. There's nothing wrong with it. It looks exactly what ciders are supposed to look like, so I'm gonna give it a three as well. All righty. All right, now let's move on to the taste of this cider. Again, this is gonna be out of 20. It's still the BJCP standards. We're just judging it on different aspects. Okay, so to me, it tastes like Closer to being a tart apple, it's not It's not that sweet, like uh, I know I keep comparing it to the bad apple, but the bad apple did have that metal foam honey in there where it's added that sweetness to it. This isn't as sweet. I get like a little bit of a citrus in there, and I don't even know if that's supposed to be there at all. That might be from the sulfites or the malic acid that's kind of playing a game on my tongue. Um, that's what I'm getting, what about you? That tartness was the exact word I was going to use. Uh, it, it's very close to tasting like a Granny Smith apple. Oh yeah. Um, more tart, less, less sugary, less sweet. It's still sweet, it's still a very nice, easy drinking cider, but... Oh, 100%, I can, it, I can do a it. There's no you know, added sugar or extra stuff that you'll find in the commercial ones. This doesn't taste like yeah. any of the commercial ciders you've had. Which is a good thing because you kind of get tired of the, yeah. the big brands and the and same old. That that amount of sugar in those things. When you wake up in the morning, uh, you're gonna feel that. Yeah. All that sugar, hurt. it's gonna, it's not gonna be too bueno. So no. just saying, if you don't want to have that, we have an alternative. So out of 20, I'm actually gonna give this a 17. I am going to, I'm gonna give it an 18. Um, once again, I thought the cider was really good. Uh, these two town ciders are actually turning me into a cider person where my fridge is probably going to become half beer, half cider now. 
All right, guys, now we're gonna be moving on to the mouthfeel of the cider. Now, for bright ciders like this being a New World cider, we are looking for it to be kind of crisp, um, not kind of, kind of like light to medium body, to more on the medium side, and not too long of a finish that we find in the Imperial ones where it lasts for like about a minute. What are, what are you getting, Spencer? So it's lining up? That tartness actually uh, goes along with the mouthfeel as well. It kind of puckering a little bit in that your mouth. That astringent feeling, right? Yeah, it's very nice. The carbonation is kind of a lighter to medium. Uh, much more than wine, but much less than what you would find in, in beer. In beer, yeah, yeah. 100%. Um, you know, there's really not too much to touch on other than that. I mean, you have that effervescence that feels like that fizziness in your mouth. Um, I, Like I said before, it's very crisp. Perfect for a summer or a spring day in California yeah. out here. I, I also like the, the finish. It, it sticks with you for a while. It's a nice, pleasant kind of apple-y uh, tartness in the it's back like of your mouth. It's like a medium finish. It's not like too long. But it's no. not too short where you're like, wow, I didn't, I didn't get anything. Like that was just, like you get the other cup. Yes, yeah, you know? exactly. Um, so out of, out of five, out of five, I'm gonna give this one a four. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a four as well. I know we keep, we keep lining up our scores, yeah. but I think that's because we just have the same right, mindset. We're in on sync right now. now. We're in sync, guys. That's what's up. Now let's get into the overall impressions. What you liked, didn't like, what you might want to change. What do you think? You know. This is a great, and I've said it a couple times in the video, it's a great crisp cider. Um, a lot of good things about it. The one thing I would change about it would be that grapiness flavor, that's not a word, but we're gonna use it now. That grapiness flavor that when Spencer compared it to being kind of like a sparkling white wine. Um, I would like to see the apple flavor hop out a little bit more, not so much where it feels like it just jacked up with sugar and preserves like the, some of the bigger craft ones. But I think this was a phenomenal one. I'm gonna be giving it a seven out of 10, which is gonna give me a 42 out of 50, which is still a phenomenal score for a cider. How about you, what do you think? I really appreciate when people do things the right way, when right action mm -hmm. is involved. So when you have a cider house that sticking to the recipe of what a cider is and not going any further, mm -hmm. even if they wanted it to taste different or taste sweeter or taste whatever, even if they thought we could sell more if this tasted a different way, they didn't. They, or they, they made it cheaper because they used yeah, exactly. other fillers. They're using pure ingredients and they're sticking to their recipe. Because of that, I'm gonna give it a nine. That's gonna leave me with a 43. That's pretty good. Um, so now what we're gonna be doing on is we're gonna be moving on to the pairings of this cider. So the different things that the cider is gonna pair with as much of a cop-out or you know, fallback as it is, it's gonna pair with pretty much anything that you can you know, have with apple. So if you put apple butter on it, it's gonna go with it. If it's a pie that you could envision apples being in it, it's gonna go with it. If it's something that's on the sweeter or tartar side, it's gonna go with it. Spencer, what do we have for us today? So we're craving something sweet and for our beer TV pairing, we're actually gonna have cinnamon rolls with candied pecans on top. Now. Obviously, cinnamon and apple are going oh, to go oh, to it. I mean, man. it's sugar. The other thing we're talking about is, actually, wait, I want to see, how does this go? Hold on. Yeah, I, got, I took way too big of a bite. <laughs> okay, well, have you ever gone to McDonald's and gotten an apple pie? Yes. Does that not taste Super similar with a little bit of icing on top. It literally gave, that is so weird. Cause you have like the regular cinnamon roll and you're like, okay, it's cold cinnamon. That apple throws into it, it tastes like a cinnamon apple pie to me. And that's really, really bomb. That's a killer dessert right there. The, the sugar from the dessert actually makes the cider taste a lot sweeter mm -hmm. than we were getting earlier. It kind of pairs really well. It makes it, like I said, just super, super sweet. Any other dish, oh my gosh, the so cider can take the place of the apple in mm -hmm. whatever pairing you're trying to make because this is made with real apples. This is an apple substitute, yeah. essentially. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely killer. Um, so guys, we do have one more video that's gonna be coming at you. It's gonna be the Maid Marion, so please, please, please keep your eye out for that. One more thing I do wanna say, if when and if you guys try these beers, not even if, when you guys go out and try these ciders, I want you to leave a comment down below on what you think. 
I want you to tweet at us at BeerTV underscore LLC and let us know what you think about these ciders. Until next time, cheers. Cheers. Whoa. The 10.5 is there, but it's not harsh. I would not put this thinking it was at a 10.5. You can taste some alcoholic warmth with those apples.